Monday. We're, Happy Monday. We're live, and you look marvelous oh on Monday. Oh my goodness! Thank you so much. But, but, but you, you scared me there for a minute. You kind of quickened and I almost did a, a tumble or something. I did a twirl too many times. <laughs> and and this is a smaller um, it's a smaller platform, so I almost fell off the, the platform. But it's okay. I stayed upright, as we got them angels protecting you. That's oh my goodness. <laughs> Now, you know, um, a funny thing happened to me late last week. I've been going, you know, I've been very, very open about my son being on the spectrum. And he's in this school for independent study. So they kind of, it's like a, a transition school between college or a transition between, you know, working. And they teach you a lot of life skills. So he and I took the train to school together because he doesn't want to ride on the school bus anymore. So I wanted to ride with him to see if he could, you know, do it by himself. I'm, I'm just such a mama bear, taking that train. Um, so it took us 50 minutes, but he paid attention the entire way. When we got off the train, he recognized where he was, and he walked me to his school. So I was so proud of my son for doing this. And, uh... So, I'm like, he's, so he's, he took the train, he told me, he texted me, he said, I'm at school, so he, he did it. Um, but as I started walking back, from the school to the train, I realized I was the one that was lost. <laughs> I was so... Oh, my gosh. I was so lost <laughs> down there where we had to go. Because, you know, in New York, you, it, it's like uptown, downtown, towards the Bronx, towards Brooklyn, towards Queens. You know, or it says, go down the stairs. I'm going down there, and it's going the wrong way. And I'm like, you, do you ever, like, try to take the train and you turn around? You're like, I know I'm not the crazy one here. I know. <laughs> So I'm look, I'm, tr I'm, I'm literally, and I'm turning around in a circle because the train that I needed was not there. It was there when we got off, but they moved it. I don't know what happened. So I turned around in a circle, and who is right in front of me? Lester Holt. The, yes. What? Oh, my gosh. The NBC Nightly News anchor. And it was like he was standing there. He was dressed casual. He had on a tank top and shorts. He was walking his dog. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And when I fan crush, because I watch him, like, <laughs> I ran up to him, which this is the first thing you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> I ran up to him, and I was like, I'm such a big fan, Lester Hope, and I'm not a stalker. And, this, and that's the wrong thing to say, I'm not a stalker, because that means you are. And, and, uh, and so he's looking at me, trying to figure out if the light is gonna turn so he can keep walking. <laughs> and I was, I was talking really fast when I get nervous. And I said, uh, Mr. Holt, I used to be on The, vo the, the, the View with Whoopi. <laughs> and, and now I got my own um, talk show. So he says to me, he goes, well, what channel are you on? And I couldn't remember what channel <laughs> I'm on. <laughs> Literally, I could not, and I stood there and I got a blank look on my face and I go, ABC? <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm not on no damn ABC. I'm not on ABC. That's the other black lady on ABC. <laughs> it's Tamron. 
And so I'm going, oh my God, he thinks I'm a stalker for sure now. <laughs> so then I, like, I'm trying to tell him who I am and like my resume so he wouldn't be scared and have the look that was on his face at that moment. <laughs> and so I said to him, I said, uh, Mr. Hope, Vice President Kamala Harris has been on my show and Oprah Winfrey and Sly Stallone. And, and then I said, <laughs> that's what I said. And I'm trying to give him, I'm trying to give him everything before the light turns. And then I said, and I, and I said, and I even broke up with Len, Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> I think, I think that Lester might have been with me until I said that. <laughs> now I think he really believes that I'm a stalker. But I was, but, but I was so lost and I said, Mr. Holt, I'm lost, I can't find my train. And so I, I saw it and I, and I said, oh, I gotta go, I found it now. I found my train. And I said, it was nice to meet you. Please watch my show, cause I want you to come and play with me. I guess you should be saying. <laughs> Well, look, that's what I said to Lenny, and he came. So I said, I want you to come play with me. So he said that he was gonna watch the show today. So I don't know if Lester Holt is watching Tamron, Jennifer Hudson, or me. But thank you for watching one of us, Lester. <laughs> him so he knows that it wasn't yes. a, a weird person running up to I, him. I'm gonna call him and I'm gonna let his lovely wife know that you mean play <laughs> in, the, in the interview sense of the word. Okay. And, and like the famous uh, news columnist Cindy Adams said, that was one of those only in New York kids story. Oh my only gosh. In New York. Oh my yeah. gosh, she was like, and I kept watching him. That was the thing. When I, I kept watching him with this dog and he's looking at me and I'm looking at him. <laughs> you you oh. said you weren't a stalker, but you were acting stalkerish. I was acting stalkerish, I know. Yeah. Yeah. But it's Lester Holt, oh my goodness. And y'all, speaking <laughs> of the best in the news business, I wanna send a shout out to my friend Gail King because <laughs> Gail King just struck a deal to extend her contract with CBS News. And I am so happy that Gail King is staying put. She ain't going nowhere, but uh, you know what this means. Gail King's still gonna be wearing my dresses, okay? Every time. <laughs> And this is only one of the dresses. Every time I get a dress I like, I will see Gail and she'll go, who is that? I gotta get one and then she'll have it on. And, and, and so we always wear the same, but Gail, she fills it out a little bit better than me. Gail, <laughs> Gail got that womanly figure. So Gail, I have to, we love you so much and we are excited that you will still be on our screen. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, Gail. <laughs> now we talked about it a little bit because I, I, we talked about uh, me on this platform. I don't know if anybody noticed, but I walked out here, I did all, I do all of the twirling. I almost, and I almost always lose my balance, which is why John is so wonderful and helps me up on the platform. But every time I come out here and twirl, I just always feel like, uh-oh, Jesus, Jesus, this is it. This is the, <laughs> this the one where I'm, I'm gonna wipe out. And uh, I feel like I'm gonna fall on national television. But it wouldn't, it's not the first time, I fall all the time. When I was, <laughs> When I was on The View, I remember I fell, Elizabeth Hasselbeck and I, we fell on the floor. Both fell on the floor. Barbara Walters was horrified when we fell. And I'm telling you, if I fall, I don't have any other option. My, my default is to laugh at myself. Because what else do you have to do? All you can do is laugh at yourself. And I was thinking about that because my good friend Lunell just posted a video of herself falling. Now, here's the thing. Lunell was taping her first Netflix comedy special last year in her hometown city of Oakland, California. The footage was edited out of the show, but her knee, I guess her knees stopped hurting, so she decided to finally share the behind the scenes footage. So Lunell was getting ready to make her grand entrance, and she missed a step, and she fell down. So she's coming out, she's looking beautiful. Oh. And she fell. Now, as you know, and that every time I see her, like I clutch my heart. Now, just to tell you, Linnell is perfectly fine. She is, she is good, she's okay. But after she fell, here's the thing. We're not playing it for you because there's music on there that we can't play. You can hear one of the stage managers saying, I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> Which means it happened 
before. Somebody else fell. And I'm going, why y'all didn't say anything or put, you know, yellow tape on the floor? They probably figured because she had that bright yellow dress, she was going to see it. <laughs> but the, but Lunell said, she said, the one thing about comedy, if you cannot laugh at yourself, right. you have no business doing comedy for a living. <laughs> That's what Lunell said. She's absolutely right, because when, when something happens, you know, you have a fall or you slip or you're, you're speaking in front of people and you mess up, all you can do is laugh at yourself because then it gives everybody else permission to let go. So that was the taping of, of like I said, of Lunell's uh, Netflix special. And, you know, that's when you're looking good, you're feeling good, then you walk out, you fall flat on your face. <laughs> I love it that she was able to laugh. Because I'm going to tell you, I've fallen on stage doing stand-up more times than I care to count. Because you're coming out with very high heels. Y'all come out dancing, and I have all this energy. Um, and when I was an up-and-coming comic, I remember I was so poor, I didn't fix the heels on the bottom of my shoes. And you know, ladies, when you don't fix the heels, it catches on everything. So I was walking down the stairs to uh, come get on the stage, and I fell down a full flight of stairs, and I landed right in front of one of a group of people at a table. Now, it was, this was at a black comedy club. <laughs> Let me tell you the difference between a black comedy club <laughs> and a white comedy club. At a white comedy club, when you fall down, everybody rushes, they want to help you up. Everybody give you the phone number to their chiropractor. <laughs> Somebody's going, here, I'm an attorney, you can sue. <laughs> when you are at a black comedy club in the hood, as soon as I fell and they said, you all right? <laughs> you all right? I said, I'm all right. All I heard was, that bitch fell down the stairs. Ah! <laughs> Woo! Did you see what she was like, boom, boom, boom? Oh, my God. <laughs> I got on stage. I got heckled all night. I bet you were funnier when you fell down the stairs. <laughs> oh my gosh, they laughed for 10 straight minutes at me. Didn't know, nobody gave me a number to a chiropractor. <laughs> Not an attorney around. I'm sitting at the bus stop. People were going past me going, how you feel when you fell down the stairs? <laughs> Just... <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, but good for Linnell for laughing at herself. She got right back up and she recorded an amazing special. You can see it on Netflix. <laughs> Linnell. <laughs> oh my gosh. So y'all, convicted fraudster Anna Delvey is furious because she was the first one eliminated from Dancing with the Stars this season. Now, you, you may know Anna Delvey. There was a movie out about her. Uh, she was, she uh, pretended, Anna Delvey, pretended that she was a rich socialite, and she scammed tons of people out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. And despite being found guilty and going to prison, she was awarded with getting to compete on Dancing with the Stars. So it was a huge backlash. Uh, and Anna Delvey and Tori Spelling were both sent home first. So when Anna Delvey was asked what she will take away from the experience of being on Dancing with the Stars, she was <laughs> brutally honest. Take a look. What are you gonna take away from this competition? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Okay. Absolutely nothing. All right. Okay, first of all, did you see her partner, Ezra Sosa? Now, this is Ezra's first time on the show, like, as a choreographer. He was looking like, I'm never coming back to this dang old show. <laughs> his face looked like the views represented here are Anna Delvey's, not mine. It's his first season. He want to come back, okay? So she went on, uh, Anna Delvey went on Tori Spelling's podcast, and she doubled down on her bitterness for the show. Take a listen. Well, you guys told me what I'm supposed to do. I tried to do it, and then I still was rejected, and um, I'm taking away. Nothing is what I'm taking away from it. Because your advice was worthless. Now, this is what I say. How is the, their advice worthless? You are taking away something from the show. What, yeah, whatever happened to, if at first you don't succeed, get up, try again? Whatever happened, what's that saying? Don't cry over spilt milk. What's the other saying? Practice makes perfect. What's the other saying? When you get out of prison, do better. <laughs> I, 
can keep going, Anna Delvey. I can, I can keep on going with this. But it's like, you know, but in all seriousness, she was surprised that she got voted off first because she said it was about, it was about, you know, uh, not a popularity contest. But it, it actually is. It's dancing and it is a popularity contest. Because what fan base do you have, Anna Delvey? You scammed so many people and the audience votes, they didn't vote for you because you don't, you know, you don't have fans. Anna, you don't have fans, you have haters. Haters don't vote, haters hate. That's what they do. <laughs> and it's like, and I remember the movie, I don't know if y'all saw the movie about Anna Delvey. You know, Anna Delvey would always go, do you know who I am? I'm Anna Delvey. No, we don't know who you are because we didn't vote for you. Do you know who my father is? No, we don't know your daddy. Uh, and she was always talking about, I'm not worried about money, I can pay. No, so here's the thing, when you get, <laughs> when you get voted off of uh, Dancing with the Stars, you really realize how much you wanted to win when you get voted off. And I know, because as a former voted off uh, person, <laughs> from Dancing with the Stars, I don't know if anybody remembers me from Dancing with the Stars. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> Y'all had to think about that for a while. I heard two people clap at first. <laughs> That's why I got voted off. But you, you know, you, when you're voted off, you stand in there like, wait a minute, I put in all this work and now it's over. You literally, I felt like uh, Jennifer Holliday in Dreamgirls. And I am telling you, <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> Cause you are you are standing up there. They playing that music. Cause you got to stand up there with 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 your with your choreographer. And mine was Val Schmerkowski. And they're playing the music. Dun -dun 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 and you got to smile. And you're like, oh shoot, I don't want to go home. Dun -dun 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 and you standing up there, you're waiting, and you're looking at everybody around you, and I'm looking at, at the one, and I'm like, I know I dance better than you. <laughs> And you sitting up there, and Tom Bergeron, he's like, you know, he says, we're gonna tell you who's going home. And you're like, oh, shoot. And he goes, after the break. So you gotta stand there. Dun -dun 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 and you're smiling. Then he came back and he said, Sherry Shepard, I'm sorry, you've been eliminated. And when I tell you, I was devastated, but I just kept smiling. I kept smiling. But in reality, I kept, I was thinking to myself, am I still getting paid? <laughs> All this work I didn't put in this show, are y'all still paying me? And it was Maxim Schmerkowski. He was like, baby, they gonna pay you. I was like, well, then live your dreams. Live your dreams. But we made a list because of the top five things you want to say when you get eliminated from Dancing with the Stars. Number five is, you want to say, look, I got all these bunions for nothing. <laughs> Number four, you want to go, this is not my fault, it was my partner's fault. <laughs> he didn't pick me up. Number three, you want to say, you think I was worse than that old man? <laughs> Number two, you want to go, I demand a recount. <laughs> <laughs> and the number one thing you want to say when you're eliminated from Dancing with the Stars is, But you don't do all that, so I say, Anna Delvey, do what the rest of us do. Be gracious. That's what. <laughs> I love that we are giving away uh, and made these amazing trips during the season, uh, during the real good time getaway. So last week, a lucky viewer won a trip to Mexico. And if you want to win, you have to watch for the word of the day and enter it at SherryShowTV.com. So this week, we have another amazing trip to give away. And this week's trip is to Hawaii. <laughs> At the beautiful Outrigger Waikiki Beach Comer Hotel have partnered with Cirque du Soleil for an unforgettable trip. Take a look. 
It's time to get away to Hawaii. We'll fly you and a guest to experience an unforgettable five-night stay at Outrigger Waikiki Beachcomber Hotel, Hawaii's first craft hotel featuring local artist collaborations. Just moments from the iconic Waikiki Beach, you'll soak up the spirit of aloha with authentic cuisine and delicious Mai Tais. Plus, you'll be one of the first to catch the debut of the amazing Awana by Cirque du Soleil. This getaway is valued at over $5,000 and is sure to be a real good time. Now, since I'm feeling generous, I'm going to give you today's word. And today's word of the day is legendary. So family, go to SherryShowTV.com to enter for your chance to win this real good time getaway. Y'all, we have such a great show for you today because up next, actress Alyssa Milan. Jumping into Tuesday. Ready, set, go! With Jenny McCarthy Wahlberg. The memories with you were priceless. We got into so much trouble. <laughs> From Who's the Boss to Charmed, my first guest has spent 40 years playing beloved characters on TV. And now, for the first time in her career, She's taking the Broadway stage as the iconic Roxy Hart in Chicago. Woo! Please welcome Alyssa Milano. Thank you. Like, Thank congratulations you. Oh, yes. in your role in Chicago. That's a big deal. It is a big deal. Oh, my gosh. You know, like, your career has been, it has spanned over decades. I've watched you since you were a little girl. Yeah. Okay, so I, I was very surprised to learn that this is your first time on Broadway. Yes, yes. Well, my first job ever, I was, uh, I did the play Annie in the okay. second national touring company. Yeah. But this is the first time, yeah, it was eight years old, I was little, and this <laughs> is the first time I've ever been on Broadway. And it has been as thrilling and exciting and wonderful as you could ever imagine. Oh my gosh, and you sing and you dance mm -hmm. on Broadway. Now I know I did a Cinderella, uh, Cinderella the Musical with yeah. Kiki Palmer on Broadway, mm -hmm. and it was my very first time. I blacked out on one of the, like, <laughs> I didn't pass out, like I just couldn't remember my lines. Yeah, that happened. Like, did that Isn't happen that to you at yeah. all? Yeah, so it happens to me, but I have, I, I took improv classes. Okay. So I just, like last night, I called one of the characters the wrong name. Uh-huh. And, and I was just like, you're not, I'm not having Fred's baby, I'm having Amos's baby. <laughs> and I just sort of like, you You're know, like, I'm I, having somebody's yeah, baby. someone's baby <laughs> in this courtroom scene. Yeah, I just kind of, you know, but that's the beauty of live theater. I that's think that's why is. people come see you yes. live theater is because anything could happen. Anything could and happen. And it's exciting, you know, it's exciting to be an audience member, I think. Yes. And to be like, oh yes, she messed that up. Yeah. <laughs> Because you go home with that. Because you know when we do TV, mm -hmm. it's like it, we, there's a saying that says, "Well, they'll fix it in post yeah. if we make a mistake." Yeah. But live, let me. Have you gotten this yet? Like on the Sunday matinees, uh -huh. is when they have hearing aids that they will give people who are elderly who oh. can hear better. Have you gotten the Herb? What did they say? <laughs> what did they say? In no, you but we have had some like very drunk people. <laughs> and they want to get involved. Who will yell things at the stage. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, that's not right. <laughs> like, Roxy will say something. Oh, that's mean. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. That, it's, it is. It's a live experience. And it's a live it's experience. Thrilling. And I think people's TVs are so big at home now yeah. that they think that they're maybe watching, yes. you know, that their TV. That oh. it's interactive, right? <laughs> It's so fun that you're doing this. And I know you're away from your family. You, you I, I love this because you've been married to your husband, David, for 15 years. Yes. Fifth, you know how long that is? That's nice. 
Well, in, in Hollywood years, and too, that's, that's that's a really long time in Hollywood years. Exactly, in Hollywood years. That's, that is such a feat, 15 yeah. years. And you know what? And he surprised you on your opening night. He did. Well, here's the thing, is I was like, I don't want anyone I know yeah. there for opening night. It's stressful enough. Yeah. I don't want to have to worry about, like, figuring out the tickets and, like, yeah. the whole scenario. And... I did the whole show, uh -huh. and I went out for the curtain call, and I did my bow, and all of a sudden I looked up, and there was this really hot guy, like, <laughs> like handing me flowers oh. from the, and I was like, wait, that's my husband. <laughs> what? Why are you here? What are you doing? But it was very sweet. And he just said, he said, I couldn't, I couldn't not share in this moment Absolutely. with you. This is a big, this is a big moment. So it was very, um, it was very sweet. And kind. I love this. I love that after 15 years, you still call your husband, like, this hot guy. Yeah. How do you keep the hotness after fi 15 years? I don't know. He just still gives me the butterflies in my tummy when I see really? him. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, man. You know what? He makes me laugh. Does And he? I feel like that's a lot of it. Yeah, that's a lot, when they can make you laugh. When they can make you laugh. Because if you could laugh through things, you could get through anything, I believe. That's right, girl. You know? We're just talking about that. Yeah. Absolutely. And then from, you know, 15 years of marriage, you have two children, Milo and Bella. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you're away from them. This is three months that you're gonna be, oh, they're so cute. You're gonna be doing this show for three months, so you're away from them. I know when I'm away from Jeffrey when he was little, he would send me pictures of tears coming down his eyes. My daughter did that last, she... last week. Okay, so how you dealing with that? Is the mom guilt creeping in? Of course. Yeah. Of course, I think, I think we have mom guilt and I think that, we, we can't get away from it because people expect us to have it. So then we have it because then even if we don't have it, we feel guilty for not having it. <laughs> so, so you're like, you're just gonna have mom guilt regardless. But yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's hard. It's, I feel like it's harder on us though than it is on them because yeah. their life doesn't really change exactly. much. Wait till they're 19, girl. They won't even, they won't right. even care if you go. I tell right. Jeffrey I'm leaving. He goes, okay, whatever. You know, so. <laughs> At least they can appreciate you Ye being gone. Yeah, and they're coming um, not next week, but the week after. So you, they're gonna. So I'm very you excited. Perform. Yes. Th now here's the thing. Okay, so you're out here by yourself. Mm -hmm. you, I know you, when you leave a Broadway show, what do you do? Do you go out? Do you like what? what what's the deal after you go out? Go out. What do you mean? No, I go home and go to bed. You go home and go to bed. I go home and go to bed. Girl, you out here in New York. Okay, when's the last time you've been to a club? What kind of club? Like. The <laughs> Like a gym? Like a workout? Like, okay, I know you have not been out to a club. Okay, you are out here by yourself. We're gonna go to a club. I'm gonna take you out. You're like, gonna take me to I'm a club? I'm gonna take you out a little. I'm in. Okay. I'm in, where are we going? Okay, it won't be the jungle gym. We gonna oh, go okay. to a club. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll figure out something that I'm gonna tell you, okay? <laughs> I'm ready. Now, I love this because <laughs> you, I remember you from Who's the Boss? And you remember? <laughs> And you recently reunited with your former TV dad, Tony Danza. Yes. How was that with, oh, oh look at you on Tony. Oh my gosh, how was that? I mean, we've kept in touch all these years. He's like my longest living friend, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and he came to see my show. He, he came did. to see Chicago, yeah. So that, I know it yeah. was nice. Oh, it's amazing. And, and I'm so, I, I go see his cabaret all the time. Yes. I've, been three times, I'm like a groupie. Uh -huh. He needs merch. I told him last time I saw him, I was like, you need merch, because I would fully Sell wear a, a Tony Danza t-shirt. Absolutely. Anyway, he, you know, just to be around someone that loves to perform that much, it's so inspiring. Yeah. He inspires me still to this day. Oh, and man. I love him very much. I love y'all two together. All right, Alyssa, I'm just in my mind, I'm trying to figure out the club. So you, we're, we're gonna go for it, we're gonna go. Maybe we'll go to a club like we gotta change our names. Like we can put Ooh. on, you know, I'll let you wear one of my wigs. Oh, let's go. I'm, We're gonna wear I'm, something different. We're just gonna be two different people. Okay. Okay. I'm totally in on this. Janiqua and Chanel. So I'm, we will go. I'm in. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm in. Yeah, we gonna get, we gonna have okay. you, before your kids get here and you gotta go back to being mom. Yes, great. Okay, And I right. might need to go after the kids. <laughs> leave, too. After they leave. <laughs> Girl, Alyssa, thank you so much thank for coming for by. Me. I'm glad you're here. 
check out Alyssa as Roxy Hart in Chicago at the Ambassador Theater from now through November 10th. And up next, it's a fashion face-off between Gen Z and Gen X. Don't miss it. Alyssa Milano. There's more Sherry. BRB. fashion face-off. Now, Gen Zers are always wearing the hottest fashion, but what if you're a Gen Xer in your 40s and 50s and you want to rock the same trend? So here to break it down is fashion expert Kathy Buccio! <laughs> okay. Now, Kathy, younger girls and us mm -hmm. seasoned women, we all want to look fashion forward. Yes. So how, how the heck do, do, does this work for mothers and, and women, you know, who are that age and mm -hmm. this age? It works for everyone. I always say the trend is for everyone. It's just knowing how to wear it. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to okay. see that today with a little face-off, a friendly face-off. A little friendly face-off. Face -off. <laughs> all right, so let's get started. So each trend that is being worn by both Gen Z and Gen X, and we're going to kick it off with the denim on denim trend, which I'm seeing all the time. So first is our Gen Z. Sarah. Come on out, Sarah. Let's go, Sarah. Okay. So Sarah's walking out. Okay. This is this is giving Texas Hold'em, right? Okay, very Texas Hold'em. This, uh, this look is from Ann Taylor, and I love that we're just doing a vest, Sherry. Okay, There's just nothing a vest. underneath that vest. It's young Z, it's young, it's fresh. We're going with the flare. Fall is all about the flare, but we're going a little extra, okay. we can see with this look. And we're all about a platform. A platform, a platform. loafer. So please peek these Dolce Vita heels. They're absolutely stunning. Ooh, they elongate her too, but she's having fun. Yes. And we're transitioning to summer to fall. Love it. Now, yes. now us grown women want to wear this trend too, the denim on denim. Yes. Let's see it on our Gen X model, Bonnie. Bonnie, That's come on out. Bonnie. Thank you, Sarah. Yes. Oh, all right. this look on Bonnie because instead of the denim, we are giving her the skirt, right? First, we're doing it with your classic blazer. This look is from Macy's, and yes. I love that it gives her a little bit of that puff sleeve. There's an accentuation, but we're keeping it sexy, Cher. We're yes. keeping it sexy because that skirt has a slit, in right? It. And give her a pop of color in her, her look that really brings out her hair color and her eyes. But we gotta talk about the booties. My favorite part about fall is yes. boot shopping. Yes. These are patent sexy two-tone from Sam Edelman. And it really gives her, because we don't wanna do a skirt with a flat. We okay. wanna do a heel. We wanna do a and heel. And we see, we see the difference here, Sharon. We see the difference with yes. Gen Z and Gen X. Yes, I see it's like a little class here. Yes. Like, yeah. A little elevated. A little elevated. Yes. Yes. Okay, Sarah and Bonnie, thank you so much. All right, the next trend is something that we have seen all fall season. It is the burgundy leather. Burgundy is everywhere. Yes. Okay, so uh, let's see how Gen Z should rock this. Come on out, Summer. Turn out. Summer. Yeah. Oh, Look at you. Okay, this is my beautiful niece, Summer. Summer. And we are seeing burgundy is the color. Yes. But this, we're seeing a little edgier, a little more fun because she she's so Gen Z. She's yeah. got a look from Forever 21. She's got okay. the little, bla little black dress going. And Cher, you know what I'm seeing everywhere? What? I'm seeing the sneakers with a dress. And yes. we're giving, we're just having fun. A yes. Foot Locker from Foot Locker. We got the Nike Dunks. She is just, she's sassy, she's spicy. Yes. She's having fun with burgundy with that moto. Okay, me love it. Now, yes. grown women, we love burgundy Ooh. leather too, and they don't have a Forever 57. No. So let's, <laughs> let's bring out our Gen X model, who's also Summer's mother. Candy, come on out. Come on, Candy. Okay. from the Scoop Collection in Walmart. It's luxurious, it's rich, yes. it's just beautiful. Baby. And we gave her the Steve Madden heels to elongate those legs, tie the look, but nothing says fall like a turtleneck, and she is just on fire! Okay, let me tell you something. I love Summer, but Candy got it going on. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Summer and Candy. So the last trend is popular with the kids. It's all right, don't even worry about it. It's popular with the kids. It's leopard print. So let's see how Gen Zers are wearing this look. Come on out, Kimberly. Yes, Tim! Kimberly, yes! yes! Kimberly, what is that? What your is Rory What's out your here? With? Go on, Kimberly. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about, okay, this look is from Target, the Target. leopard. It's a two-piece. 
but she is showing us how to throw, how to layer, especially during fall. Yes. Give her a mesh top and an oversized blazer. We need one in our closet. This is from yes. H&M and the Moto Boots. Can't forget the Moto Boots yes, and the look boots. together. But can we talk how fabulous she looks? Oh, my God. Rocking it. Leopard is a must in our closet okay. this season. We got the leopard. Now, older women shouldn't be afraid to wear no. animal print, so let's show them why they're so fabulous. We got our Gen X model, who's also Kimberly's mom. Come on out, Karen. Yes, Karen! Karen! Yes. Karen, what? I mean, we love our Gen Z, but the moms in Gen the X moms. are just rocking. Okay, first of all, look from, Lep look from um, Loft. And okay. look, we are accentuating a Karen's waist. She looks va va boom, <laughs> yes. like a, like a fix it. We gave her these gorgeous suede Dolce Vita boots to go. Okay, show up, show off your Look boots. Very yeah. mindful, yeah, really. very sexy, very demure. I love it. Yeah, oh. She is looking so fierce, and you know what? We're seeing a difference. Wear the trend. Just wear it. Yes. Whatever feels right for you. And Kimberly, I love you. I love you, Kimberly, but you better ask your mama. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Thank you so much to all of our models and Kathy for being here. So for more info, come on out, y'all. On where to get these looks, go to SherryShowTV.com. We'll be right back. Come on, y'all. There's more Sherry. BRB. hard pill to swallow. You can't predict the future, but what you can do is plan for it. One way to do that is by getting a life insurance plan now that can help protect your loved ones later on. So here to tell us more is Sherry family favorite, Jonathan Lawson, <laughs> spokesperson for Colonial Penn Life Insurance Company. Jonathan, it is so great to see you. Hey, Sherry. It's great to see you as well. Thanks so much for having me back. Oh, Jonathan, of course. So can you tell us, why is purchasing a life insurance plan a smart choice for people who want to plan for their family's future? Well, Sherry, I know firsthand how heartbreaking it is to lose a family member. Mm -hmm. And I also know that the grieving process can be even more difficult if your loved one didn't have a life insurance plan, leaving you to scramble and pay for unexpected bills. That's where a guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance plan from Colonial Pen can help. Your loved ones could get up to $25,000 to spend however they need, giving them some much needed financial relief and a sense of gratitude knowing you took care of them. I love that. Jonathan, that is so fantastic. Now, are there any limitations on how loved ones can use the money? No, Sherry, the money can be used however they wish. Now, people often use it for final expenses, such as funeral and burial costs, which makes perfect sense since an average funeral costs $10,000. But your loved ones can also use the money for other expenses, like unpaid debts, loans, taxes, or whatever they may need. That is so good to know. So who can apply for these life insurance plans? Now, this is my favorite part. If you're between the ages of 50 and 85, you qualify automatically. No exams or medical questions. So you never have to worry about getting turned down due to health and can just get the coverage you need hassle-free. Mm. Jonathan, this all sounds great. Now, do you have to spend hours on the phone to apply? No. Applying for a plan is quick and simple. And that's because your acceptance is guaranteed. Just call the special number for our Sherry family, 800-416-9516 and speak with a licensed insurance agent. You can have a policy by the time you hang up. It's that easy. And Sherry, oh. before I became a spokesperson, I was a licensed insurance agent. And I can assure you, there are other agents on the phone right now who are excited to help you get your family the financial protection they deserve. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay, now we've talked a lot about benefits and hassle-free mm -hmm. enrollment, but we haven't touched on the most important topic, the money. Now, how much do these plans cost? Great question. Guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance policies from Colonial Penn start at $9.95 a month. Mm. So for the cost of one movie ticket, you can begin planning your family's financial future. Plus, your premiums will never increase and your coverage will never decrease, thanks to our rate lock guarantee. why we love when you're here, Jonathan. Now, how can our viewers get started? Well, if you're ready to start planning your family's future, don't wait. Call 800-416-9516 right now to speak with a licensed insurance agent about your coverage options. 
When the time comes, you'll have peace of mind knowing your family is covered and all it takes is one call. Again, that's 800-416-9516. Okay, now before you go, Jonathan, what's one last thing you would say to someone who isn't sure a guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance plan is right for them? I would say just remember, if you are between 50 and 85 years old, your acceptance is guaranteed no matter your health. So if you're in that age range, we will be covered without any health questions or medical exams. Plus, you can enroll in a policy by the end of the call. Just call 800-416-9516. Okay. You heard him. Call 800-416-9516 to start planning for your future and protecting your loved ones now. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jonathan. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> We'll be right back. Want to get away? Go to SherryShowTV.com and enter the word of the day for your chance to win a real good time getaway. It's time to turn up the heat and play in a hot flash. So I am here with Serenity from Georgia. Hi, Serenity. Hi, Sherry. And here's how we're going to play. Photos of hot celebrities are going to flash across the screen, okay. and you're going to have 20 seconds to guess four correctly. Shout them out when you see them. And today's theme is hot guys from the summer. Ooh. You ready? I'm ready. You set. Hot flash. All right, let's go. John Legend. All right. Donald Glover. All right. Um, John, uh, ooh, Channing Tatum. Yes. Sue Jackman. Yes. Um, Tom you got Tom. it, Mama. Congratulations, you have won a $100 cash gift card, oh! and you have won the Sherry Fair. Oh! There you go, to cool off your hot flashes, which you don't look like you're having. Y'all, we'll be right back. Yeah. Come out here for this outfit. There's more Sherry, BRB. Come be a part of my studio audience. Go to SherryShowTV.com for tickets. We'll be right back. There's more Sherry, BRB. Tomorrow, Jenny McCarthy Wahlberg will be here, so join us in for the best time in daytime. Bye-bye. Yeah.